All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel where uh, you can see it's been flooding quite a bit again here lately. But uh, today's video is actually sponsored by Simply Safe, where we want to remind you there is no safe like Simply Safe. And I'm going to punch in my code right here so I can get in the shop. But um, yeah, we're going to show you guys some of the stuff we've used here at the shop for quite a while with Simply Safe. See, we've got our keypad mounted right there, right inside the door. So we've actually had a system for, I think almost a year here at the shop, and it's been awesome to be able to check in on the cameras, kind of peek at what's going on if I'm out of town. And um, we also have some things like the entry sensor there, which these are just held on with some really good double-sided tape. And if we listen, shh, hear the beep. So we've got our base station mounted over there, kind of right outside the office door. So when we're in the office, like eating lunch and somebody walks in the door, we hear them instead of just having people randomly walk around the shop because that has happened before. But these are a few of the pieces that I have for my house system. There's our base station there, uh, an indoor camera, doorbell camera, which I'm kind of excited to have. And then here at the shop, we also have a couple of these outdoor cameras. And then this is a temperature sensor and it constantly logs, um, you know, the temperature. Here is a motion sensor. So we're gonna have one of those inside the house. And this is a water sensor, which another thing that I have had happen at my house was I had a water line fail behind my washer in the laundry room flooded quite a bit of my house. It wasn't cool. Had to replace carpet, had to replace some flooring because I had some uh, that, you know, vinyl flooring, planky wood stuff in my house. Anyways, it all got messed up because it went for a couple of days because it always happens when you're out of town. You know, you never have a failure while you're there in the house. Something's got to break when you're out of town, at least for me, working a race, whatever, and we end up having a problem. So Simply Safe is going to help me keep an eye on the house like we keep an eye here on the shop. Simply Safe has 24/7 professional monitoring and it is powered by Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. When a threat is detected, Simply Safe's monitoring professionals promptly contact you and dispatch first responders to your home even if you're away or unable to respond. So the Simply Safe Fast Protect service is less than a dollar a day and if you're interested in getting one for yourself, you can go to simplysafe.com slash winwithksr and get your own system. And if you don't love it, you can return it for a full refund within the first 60 days. So it's less than a dollar a day for you to have Simply Safe and their Fast Protect technology protect your home. There's no long-term contract, so you guys can start and stop your system whenever you want. You also will save 20% if you sign up for a Fast Protect plan at the link below which is simplysafe.com slash winwithksr and you will get your first month free, which is even better. Who doesn't like free? And uh, why not add some, uh, add some security to your house to protect your house while you're off on vacation with your family. So let's get to the rest of the video and show you guys what else we got going on around the shop as well as some updates on the Cutlass. The old KSR Cutlass. All right, well, the first update we've got going on in the shop right now is we've gotten our cylinder heads back from the machine shop for Soccer Mom. How about that for the repaired area? No more ugliness. Let's see if I can find a picture to drop in from what it used to look like. But the only little bit left is that little bitty spot right there, which is not a problem because the fire ring that actually seals, or the head gasket seals really close to you know the chamber right here this is more or less an inconsequential part of the gasket so no worries there and the gaskets don't have a fire ring really we don't have the the gaskets that have you know the rings and we don't have hoops yet some of you did mention that and we don't have the equipment here locally to do that to do the hoops and the receiver grooves yes we could send it all out and have it done but that would just take longer 
and I really don't think it would have hurt itself had I been a little more uh, responsible with the tuning to not have that cylinder lean. We did not really do much individual cylinder tuning with the 388. We kind of chucked it in, ran sick week. And one of the things we're gonna do in the future with Soccer Mom is I'm going to work the tune so that the race tune-up has the option to be on alcohol all the time because running it on pump gas to then flip during the burnout kind of messes with the plug reading a little bit. Once you've got your plug reading figured out, I don't think it's nearly as big of a deal and we wouldn't have run into this problem had we done this first, but pump gas leaves a little bit of residue on the plugs and color that affects our reading for when we're on alcohol going down the racetrack. So we're gonna do some changes there with the future. You can see our, uh, our wall has some couple of new pictures here and there. Got a cool new one of the Viper with it, hanging a wheel in the air. Yeah, look at that. That's down at Sebring, for those of you that don't recognize the background. One other little thing I've got going on, got some parts for the old Dodge. Got a bed cover as well as some window deflectors and some mud flaps. I actually had the mud flaps and stuff for a while, just hadn't put them on. My stuff just gets shoved off to the end, which is kind of normal. You know, same with this sad story we've got going on here, but hasn't been a whole lot going on with my engine. See my oil pan sitting there. I did get a piece of quarter inch aluminum, big, huge piece to uh, be able to make myself a motor plate out of. That's actually the new screen that goes uh, inside the oil pan. The transmission is here, which I can't remember if I've shown that on the channel yet or not, but got a turbo 400 for the car and uh, used a reed case. And the reason I used a reed case is because they have a bell housing that fits an Oldsmobile. Yep, it's different than standard Chevrolet. So Buick, Olds, and Pontiac actually share the same bell housing bolt pattern. Don't know why they decided to do that and be different from Chevrolet, but whatever. And guys, it's an Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. It's not a Pontiac, it's not a Buick. Oldsmobile. It's kind of funny to see some of you guys make comments, ask about the Buick or ask about the Pontiac. Come on. So I will have more of a full episode next week on getting some more of this stuff mounted. Been waiting on a couple of things. In fact, uh, Peyton that's doing the intake is actually custom making me a mandrel because I decided to get away from this separate alternator pulley mandrel setup thing. So that'll be in an episode next week. Kind of give you guys a more in-depth update on the Cutlass. Um, we've got some of our engines ready to go. This is a short block that is ready to go out. And see, we've got head gaskets and some other parts in this box here. Bare block getting ready to be assembled. Another bare block on the stand. This one's about to go outside, get washed. Cam bearings installed, and then it gets measured for uh, file fitting the rings, starting to put the crank in the engine, on and on and on, getting the cam in it and degreed and all that kind of fun stuff. But Eddie is actually hopping on an airplane today to head up to uh, mid-Ohio which actually, let's see, it's 9.30. Yeah, he's already in the air. So I'm actually flying out tomorrow morning. As soon as I drop my kids off at their summer camp, I drive up to Jacksonville, hop on an airplane, and then away I go to uh, Ohio for the Trans Am race, which, yeah, there'll be some videos from that coming soon. Uh, Eddie's been working on the exhaust on the Corvette here. So you can see he's got that started there as well as there were some other things he finished up inside the car which i don't remember what it was but he did some stuff on that yesterday uh, cj's gotten steve's side by side all apart the engine has been shipped off uh steve got some new tires in which my idea was to save these until after we get the new engine installed so that we can go rip it around on the new engine maybe do some burnouts and stuff. I gotta talk this through with Steve, obviously. Maybe Steve wants to do some burnouts himself. I don't know, we're gonna ask him. But once we get the new 400 horsepower turbo set up in, we can go out and rip it around 
and not tear up a brand new. They look expensive. I mean, they're those are pretty trick looking tires. So we'll figure that out with Steve once uh, once we get all that going. The old hot rod is gone. The big 1948 hot rod that's all gone and back with its owner. We got a differential built for the Viper that unfortunately I built that one. We were going to haul it in our luggage up to Ohio. Eddie was going to be putting it in today. And he texted me this morning at like 6.30 and said that they wouldn't let him take it on the plane. It's too heavy. So it's back in his car at the airport and we're just not going to have the ideal gear for what we really need at Mid-Ohio. So CJ has had a little job here yesterday and that is assembling Spencer's intake manifold because we need to be able to drop the intake manifold onto a mock-up engine in the car to finish kind of the planning for the firewall. So you can see Spencer's going with a low ram intake manifold and then a shearer fabrications intercooler, like an air to water intercooler with the, sh the sheet metal top, which I think that's their lowest profile design. Even though Spencer does have a cowl hood for the car, or we ordered him a cowl hood to go with his fiberglass front end that's going on the car. He uh, still wanted that the low profile intake manifold and all of that's gonna look pretty wild. See, we have two different sets of injectors. This one will be a little different than what I was talking about with Soccer Mom because this injector is pump gas and then this injector will be like a C16 race gas. So this will have really not nearly as much issue with flipping fuels because they're both a gasoline fuel versus the methanol. Methanol plug reading is very different than gasoline plug reading, which I'm still learning if I'm being completely honest. So you can see we did, instead of running one of those bolt-on plugs with an O-ring that can fail, we drill and tap these to put a pipe plug in them. This is going to run over to our Rife sensor block that's mounted somewhere over on the firewall for our MAP sensor. And it may split off somewhere and go to the fuel pressure regulator for the boost reference fuel pressure. We've got our Rife air temp sensor in here. So we will have really good data on the air temp and all that other fun stuff. So I actually yesterday was kind of getting started on hanging the fuel cell into Spencer's car, which I stepped away from the firewall stuff that I was working on because I needed to see where the fuel cell needed to go because down there on the ground, you can see I have an old school air shock right here. Got some tabs and what we are going to be doing is back here behind the rear end, we're gonna put a hoop right here and there'll be some tabs on it or on top of it something and there'll be some tabs off of this bar right here and that air shock will be placed into the car for driving down the street my plan is to have it on some quick pins so that when spencer gets to the track he'll pop these two pins out remove the air shock completely so that the shock dampening is not trying to counter what these AFCO shocks are doing in the car, which this is a really, really nice AFCO four-way adjustable shock. And we don't want this shock fighting the cheap air shock that, you know, is going to have some really basic valving in it. So once I get that done, all of this stuff, rear end, control arms, wishbone, anti-roll bar, all of that will come out and go over to the powder coater where we also have a piece to powder coat for Steve's buggy. So I kind of shifted gears a little bit to jump back on the back of this car just to be able to get the powder coating done so that when Steve's engine comes back, we'll be able to put the panel, we'll already have it back from powder coat. We'll be able to just reassemble his boost gauge and boost controller and some switches that he added on a panel that CJ built for the car. So we did kind of a quick mock-up of the intake earlier 
and we need to have some clearance about to back there so our firewall will come up off of here come back kind of follow the bars and then do some kind of curve here to tie it up and uh, the throttle body ends up basically right here is where the back of the throttle body ends up so we've got a little trimming to do right on the center of the firewall there so we put our trusty mock-up block back in there the plan is to have the turbos well one turbo per side but somewhere where the inlet of the turbo maybe right up in here they'll be on a little bit of an angle and then the exhaust will come down and come out this spot right here and come under you know come down and come under and out maybe lower we'll figure all that out got this panel made a couple days ago one of the more difficult parts about this car i'll say is the ability to unbolt all of this stuff so you can see that we've got a flange that i welded here for the firewall to bolt to this piece here has a mark that i still have to drill so anywhere that the firewall touches the frame will be welded but where it attaches to the roll cage it will not be welded so you can see this flange down here also has holes in it and the firewall is going to come down and then bend so that we can put bolts up through it because we still have plans to unbolt the roll cage see it unbolts there it's got a couple of bolts here there's bolts for the main hoop there's bolts at the back of the car there's bolts that mount it to the roof so all of that subframe well the really the roll cage from the firewall back as well as this frame rail right here which is tied to the factory subframe mounts all of that will come out and then we will be able to have all of the cage powder coated so getting excited to get cranking back on this thing again see if we can get this thing on the ground real soon hopefully by like middle of to the end of next month we'll have this thing on the ground i do have to design and fabricate a my own k member as well as the shock mounts which we're doing something a little different than normal there at least different than normal for this car but that's uh kind of going to wrap it up for this quick shop update quick i know i can kind of ramble on about stuff but i like this stuff race cars race cars are fun remember that we got a t-shirt for that somewhere around here so big thanks to everybody who went to the uh website last week and bought some stuff maybe some of you guys got some soccer mom parts in your orders if you did take a picture of it and tag us on instagram or facebook you know we'll share it on our page and uh like i said we appreciate all you guys buying stuff from the merch site throughout the rest of the year but especially when we do something cool like you know give away some parts maybe going to do some more of that stuff with um you know in the future especially if we tear some stuff up might as well give it to you guys instead of just throwing it away and uh there's one other thing to talk about but not in this video and that's what's in that box right there some of you guys might know what it is but it's coming Got a lot of stuff to do so thanks again for watching subscribing commenting liking the video and uh, we'll see you guys next time